When I was in second grade, my favorite book was this little yellow paperback that was the story of saints. In all the same ways that people talk about the Bible as an instruction manual for life, I had the sense that everything that I could ever want to know about what it meant to live a good life, to be a good person, was contained in this one little yellow book and its stories. This should horrify you. I mean, have you ever read the stories of the saints? They are filled with stories of women who starved themselves or who submitted to torture or who tortured themselves or all of the above. The path to sainthood, that is the path to being the best good person, or to put it in the terms of our series, the path towards the essentials of life, is laid out in these stories as a matter of stripping away not just material goods or unhealthy habits, but stripping away of the very self. For all people, and especially for women, according to this book, to remove any trace of the individual is to live a life more fully at one with God. To live dedicated to God is another way to say live to live dedicated to that which is the most important. Remembering that God is simply another word for ultimacy, that is the ultimately important, the ultimately meaningful. Remembering that God is also another word for the ultimately mysterious and unknown reminds us that every attempt we make to live a life of such dedication is always an approximation and a practice that will fall short. The trying is the point. Now, even if you didn't obsess about St. Teresa of Avila as a child, at some point or another, you too probably got the message that the barrier between you and a life of ultimate purpose, the barrier there is you. Your desire or your ego, your body and its needs, your being too much or not enough. The saints and the mystics use the word annihilation, as in to be one with God was to fully annihilate the self. To find the essential life was to annihilate the self, the individual. These sorts of messages are why Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau's message of individualism resonate for so many of us when you are told that the essential facts of life have nothing to do with you, that you are actually the obstacle in the way of essence. It is intensely liberating and healing to hear that you are not the obstacle, but rather you are life's essence. You are what is essential. You are not in the way. You are the way. No law can be sacred to me but that of my nature, as Emerson wrote. Or I went to the woods because I wanted to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, as Thoreau described. The transcendentalists were a strong corrective for the no-self imperative of the moral life found in more traditional religious messaging. Instead of no self, the path of the essential life became only self. It is only what will I do with my one and wild and precious life? What will I do? As Unitarian Universalist minister Cheryl Walker has said, for many people who felt the heavy yoke of being in communities of faith, where they could not be fully who they are. Individualism tastes like the food they've been hungering for. But, she says, it is only good when we are starving. 
Once we have had our fill, we remember that both of these paths are half truths. Focusing only on the self or focusing on none of the self, both fail to account for the fuller story of what is actually essential. That is the truer path of the essence of life, which is relationship. The ways that the self comes into relationship with other selves, the ways that me moves to we, the ways that we are all in this together. As Margaret Wheatley writes, the scientific search for the basic building blocks of life has revealed a startling fact. There are none. The deeper physicists peer into the nature of reality, the only thing they find is relationships. Even subatomic particles do not exist alone. Although physicists still name them as separate, these particles aren't ever visible until they are in relationship with other particles. Everything in the universe is composed of these bundles of potentiality that only manifest their potential in relationships. Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh takes this even further, inviting us to consider life at its most essential, not just in terms of our interconnectedness, that is our relationship with other people, but also our interconnectedness with all of life across time and space and species. But what, it's what he calls our interbeing. He lifts up the biological reality that our body is a community. Our body is a community. And the trillions of non-human cells in our body are even more numerous than the human cells. Without them, we could not be here in this moment. Without them, we wouldn't be able to think or feel or speak. There are no solitary beings. The whole planet is one giant, living, breathing cell with all its working parts linked in symbiosis. To discern what is essential in life with relationship and our mutual potentiality as a starting point is infinitely more complicated and humbling than either the no self or the all self path offers. Especially when you add in those non-human relationships, it invites us to both step up with all that we are and to surrender entirely, to offer everything and yet know nothing to accept that there is wisdom, not just in every other person, but also in plants, as Potawatomi writer Robin Wall Kimmerer teaches, or in marine mammals, as Black feminist Alexis Pauline Gums leads us to. There is ancient wisdom, and there is future wisdom. And we need all of these ways of knowing and living. And by holding each of these, all of these contradictory and chaotic, though they may be, this is the only way to live dedicated to that which is most important. The ultimately meaningful, that is, the ultimately mysterious and unknown. It invites us to hold at the very center of our lives the awareness that we have a piece, and it is a very small piece of the truth. And so we keep practicing, knowing that all we offer in this quest is an approximation. Everything we do will fall short. It is the trying that is the point.